Hey, everybody. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper, and welcome to Build at Home. Today, I'm chatting with Gavin Lewis, who plays Moody Richardson on Hulu's uh, new series, Little Fires Everywhere. Welcome, Gavin. How you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Uh, to kick things off, uh, I just want to say that we know that it's been a hard time for a lot of people out there. And as of today, 132 million school meals have been missed. Uh, the campaign No Kid Hungry is looking to fix that. So if you're looking for a way to help, uh, go to nokidhungry.org and you can get more information on how you can donate and help those families. Um, so Gavin, I want to check in with you. Uh, what's been going on? Uh, nothing much. Just trying to trying to stay busy at home with the doing a lot of reading and <laughs> I've been playing a game called Animal Crossing on the Nintendo Switch a lot. Yeah? Yeah. So where where are you at right now? Uh, I am just home. I don't know. It's a phone call. It's okay. Just... We're doing, like, we're doing build at home, so we're going to have phone calls. We're going to have crazy stuff. I right, bet. Uh, no, I'm just home in my living room of my house, uh, chilling on the couch for most of the beach. Yeah. Who's there with you? Uh, both my parents. Other room. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So how many um, days have you been sort of social distancing or quarantining? Uh, we have been home for about a week, I think, mm -hmm. which is sort of just hanging out at home, taking stops at the grocery store and trying to stay busy. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned you've been reading and doing other stuff, but uh, what have the days been like? Have you been stressed about what's happening or trying to just kind of hang out with family and friends? Uh, just trying to kind of hang out with family and friends. Uh, just trying to stay positive. Um, I know it'll all blow over at some point. As unfortunate as it is, it, it, it will come to an end. Um, yeah, but just trying to stay busy with reading. That's the whole That's the whole thing. It's like, it, it will end. We just have to do our part to help. Um, have there been any uh, really fun things you've seen on social media or any uh, accounts out there that we should be looking at for entertainment? <laughs> Oh boy. I, I mean, there's everything everywhere right now. Um, like I've been, I've been looking at a lot of the, uh, like home exercise routines people have been doing. I like to stay active. Um, so I've been looking at a bunch of different things, ways that I can stay like active and exercising at home. Yeah. I saw on your Instagram, you did the push-up challenge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got uh, encouraged to do that and I just ignored it. Yeah. That's fair. I, I told like everyone I nominated, I was like, Hey, it's a lot of fun, but if you don't want to, I, you were the people that I thought to nominate. I have to ask too, I know that uh, you speak a lot about living with type 1 diabetes. Um, and I know that that's a community that specifically right now has to just be a little extra careful. Um, so do you have any messaging to people out there, fans of yours that are also living with type 1 diabetes with them being extra kind of careful during these times? Yeah, I, I think just to stay safe, staying home is probably the best option. Um, because we are unfortunately with type one in a slightly higher risk category for if we were to catch this. Um, but I think the best thing to do is just stay safe, uh, wash your hands a lot like everybody else. Um, but if you do get it, I mean, as long as you are taking care of the diabetes that you've got, it's, it, it'll be all right. It should be okay. Should be okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, you know, I'm really happy that Little Fires Everywhere uh, has come out during this time because I've been at home and able to watch it which I think a lot of people are in that, that same boat. Um, so what does it feel like for you that the show is finally out there and people are getting to see it? It's super exciting. I mean, it's a project that we've been, we've been working on for about a year. Um, so it's super exciting to see everybody uh, watching the show. And there's been a, a relatively positive feedback so far. And uh, I th actually think this was a pretty good time for it to come out now that everybody's home. Uh, and it gives them something to binge watch while they're, at home. Yeah. What I love about this um, this show is that it's based off of a really successful book uh, by Celeste Ng. So did you read that book? And from reading that book, what did you sort of glean about your character, Moody? Yeah. Uh, I read the book during the audition process, which was very fast. It was, it was about a week from first audition to booking, which is abnormally fast in this industry. Um, so I squeezed the book reading in between my first audition and my callback. Um, I loved it. I really, really enjoyed the book. I mean, it's written, it's, it's so popular, it's written incredibly well. Um, and I, about my character, it was super helpful in doing research because there are, I mean, there's tons. It's a very detailed and uh, interesting book. Um, and so it was really good, like, jumpstart into learning about my character. I think I, I sort of learned a lot about his relationships with his family and then how he feels about Pearl from the book, uh, which was massively helpful. Yeah, because, I mean, 
really the catalyst for a lot of the drama kind of starts with Moody and Pearl and them sort of wanting to be close to each other. And that's what brings the two families together. Mm -hmm. So getting that dynamic right, I'm sure you, it's really important to you. Yeah, very. Um, so the show is also set in the 90s. You were not born in the 90s. Um, so what has been something funny or interesting you've learned about that, that decade from doing research for this character? Oh boy. Um, it's funny. I, cause I did a bunch of research, right? Cause it's, I was born in 2003. I knew little to nothing about the nineties. I found, uh, I'd heard, you know, a couple, a couple songs on the radio here and there, but I, I really didn't know much. Um, I really just enjoyed seeing the fashion at the time makes me laugh. And I know it's going to be something now that we're going to look, there's, we've got so many styles now that we're going to look back and go, Oh, but the 90, it was my favorite thing. And the music I think was a big one. Like, there were so many bands like Nirvana, I think was the biggest one that I looked into for Moody. Yeah, because this character, they they love Nirvana, right? Like that they have the tattoo or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of his he's got a he's got a Kurt Cobain conspiracy board about who actually <laughs> killed him in his room. It's I don't know if it ended up in any of the final shots that you can see it, but it was a crazy detailed set piece that it was really cool to look at. That's crazy. So you had never really listened to Nirvana before then? No. Uh -uh. It's kind of heavy stuff. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, we have to mention too that Reese Witherspoon plays your mom, uh, and Carrie Washington is also an amazing actress. And so, what did you learn from uh, working with these two women? Reese, what really blew my mind about Reese is, well, first of all, she would always come to set with such an incredibly positive energy. Like she would be telling jokes and making everybody laugh on set, which is super refreshing days that you have to get up at, you know, 5 a.m. and come to set and you're a little bit tired. And Reese was always just like a bundle of energy, which was incredible. Um, and then on top of that, I mean, it's it's clear why she's won an Oscar. She, uh, the research she puts into a character is mm -hmm. like, it's phenomenal because I mean, there were days on set that I felt like she knew more about my character and my set pieces than I did, which was wow. unbelievable. Um, and then to be working with somebody like that in a scene is so much fun because she knows so much about the character that she'll, that she changes up her reads and it mm -hmm. makes it for me because I get to play around with my character. And then Carrie, unfortunately, didn't get to work with quite as much, but the, the story I like to tell is the uh, the first time I worked with her, the scene I had, I didn't actually have any lines with her. I had nothing. All the all was in that scene was a look. She gave me one look at the scene. Um, and based on that look, I knew she was an incredible actress, which really <laughs> is a testament. Like, there was so much thought and intensity in that one look I got at the end of the scene. I was like, wow. How do you convey that much through your eyes? Yeah. Which was amazing. And so I think I've, I've sort of learned from Carrie, uh, like emotional commitment to a choice, like a really strong commitment to something, uh, a powerful emotional choice. Yeah, because this is such a heavy script. I mean, it's dealing with issues of race and class. It's a really heavy drama. And I know previously I've seen you in a more comedic role. Um, so was there like a putting on a different hat in this role? And what was that transition like for you? It was, it was amazing. I mean, I think it's really like the dream come true as an actor to have two uh, like very, very different roles, one right after another one. Um, mm -hmm. But it was interesting because I did, I sort of got used to playing the multicam big energy that I did on Prince of Peoria, where I was this uh, very energetic prince uh, with the sort of loosely based on a British dialect. Um, and it was interesting because after working on that for six months and having so many lines in that dialect and energy, it, it was almost weird for a period of time, not using a dialect in my acting. Um, but then for the total shift to a character that's so much less energetic and so much more of a thinker, it was really a dream come true. It was so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. That is so cool. And before we wrap up, I have to say that I, I looked at your Instagram and I saw you uh, behind the scenes uh, on set playing the guitar. Do you play the guitar? I do. I love it. Yeah. Have you been doing that like all day in your social distancing? <laughs> that, is, that has been a big part of my social distancing. Yeah. And I'm trying to get back to it because I've found that uh, on certain projects, it wasn't on this one. Uh, thankfully, I got to play the guitar on set. Um, like there's a little bit in, I think, episode three where I get to play for a minute. Um, but no, that's the first episode. Actually, see, I'm getting confused. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that's been a big part of that's been a big part of my social distancing, and I've played for years. I've played probably since around the time I was diagnosed with diabetes, which I think it was about six or seven. Um, 
and it's it's, it's a lot of fun. It is. Yeah. What song are you tackling right now? You've got plenty of time to practice. I know I've got so much time. Um, <laughs> I've been trying to learn Hotel California. Ooh. Which it's so much fun, and it's not actually that difficult. It's just a lot to remember. There's a lot of notes. Wow. Well, I'll have to be following your your social media. You're gonna keep us up to date on if you get Hotel California down. Yeah, I will get it. I will get it. Give me time. Well, Gavin, it was really, really great chatting with you. Uh, as I've said, I've been watching Little Fires Everywhere. It's been keeping me entertained during my social distancing. Uh, and you guys watching, you can do the same. Little Fires Everywhere is streaming now on Hulu. So check it out. And Gavin, thank you for joining us today and, and safe coronation for you and your family. You too. Thank you so much.